What's up guys, it's MGD and welcome to a brand new video where right? today I'm going to be predicting the Premier League table around a week before it starts. Most of the big name transfers have already been completed like Sancho, Grealish, Varane, etc. And the likes of Lukaku and Kane are qu quite heavily linked with Chelsea and Man City respectively. So I'm going to assume those will occur as well. So let's get started with the relegation places. The main candidates for relegation are all the newly promoted sides as well as Burnley, Palace and Southampton now that they've lost Danny Ings. So let's get started with the predictions. I'd say in 20th place is Watford. They don't seem to be a lot better than last time they were in the league and while I reckon Ismail Asar will get a move to another Premier League team this year, the rest of the team really struggled to score and it's a bit of an aging team so I think it's back down for them. In 19th, I think it will be Norwich City, the eternal yo-yo club at this point. They've lost their best player in Buendia to Villa and might even lose Todd Cantwell to Villa as well. Now that Villa have the 100 million for Grealish. I think they'll have they'll be more consistent than their previous seasons, but it'll be consistently offered. In 18th, this might be a curveball, but I think Burnley's time in the Premier League is finally coming to an end. They've been getting worse by year by year. Sean Dyche is having to work with pennies in the transfer window. And the fact they've sta stayed in the league this long is pretty impressive to be honest. And I reckon they'll come back up into the Premier League if they invest smartly. Now that we're done with the relegation spots, I need to remind you all the fact that 90% of you are not subscribed. So if you want to see more content, make sure to subscribe like and comment down below what other kinds of content you want to see from me but for now back back to the video now for the rest of the relegation battle contestants i think in 17 and pretty narrowly avo avoiding relegation is southampton when southampton lost 9-0 the first time which is weird it's happened twice they ended up going on a, an incredible run of form but since the time it happened against united they have looked off and I think this run of form might only continue now that they have lost their best goal scorer, Innings. In 16th, I reckon Brentford are going to surprise a few people and actually survive. Although it might be because of the teams mentioned prior having bad seasons. I think Ivan Tony will be this season's Patrick Bamford in the sense that he's an English striker and will do really well for a newly promoted side and hence get himself a few caps in qualifications or friendlies for England. In to mid-table, I reckon Palace will do well and end in 15th. But Vieira will be on thin ice as the op opening 10 games will have matches against 7 of the top 8 teams of last season, which I'd be very surprised if they get more than 10 points. But if he manages to get through that, they have a very good mid-table first 11. Zaha is effectively trapped there because nobody really wants him anymore. They've learned a few exciting youngsters from Chelsea and are linked with a few from Arsenal as well. In 14th, I think Brighton will have a lot better season than last season for the simple fact that they were the least clinical team in the league last season. They were XG merchants who apparently deserved to end around 6th but end, ended up in 16th instead. They haven't signed a striker, which is surprising because a good striker would probably change the team's fortunes. If they get Tammy Abraham, he could even drag them to a top half finish. And because it doesn't seem like they'll get him, I think they'll get a lot more points but still end up in 14th. Now, in 13th, I'd say Leeds will feel second season syndrome, but not as much as most teams do, as they have a lot better team and manager than effectively all the other promoted sides in recent times. Diego Lorente at centre-back, who was absent for, for the most time last season, but improved the team a lot upon his return. Marcelo Bielsa's side might tire up at the end of the season, but over the whole season, I think they'll establish themselves as a solid Premier League team. Into 12th is Newcastle, which is where it starts getting interesting, because this depends pretty heavily on the durability of their star forwards, Alan San Maximan and Callum Wilson. If they get Joe Will back permanently, I think Arsenal will really regret it and he'll shine for Newcastle as by far their best midfielder this season. In 11th, Wolves under Bruno Lash will be a very different team to last season. While they really struggled to score and you know, I think the likes of Adama, Neto and even the return of Raul Jimenez will really change the side and while they haven't, they won't be the kind of giant killers that they were in the first two seasons, they'll be a better overall team. 
And I might rather he will have a similar season to the 1920 season because of the change in playstyle and Jimenez's importance will really be seen. For 10th, I think the return of Rafa Benitez to the Premier League will be a damp one. On top of the fact he is pretty widely hated by the Everton fans for the obvious fact that he won a Champions League with their biggest rivals. He'll get pretty similar results to Ancelotti just without any of the initial excitement. But I think individually Richarlison after pre- performing well at the Copa America will have a pretty good season along with Dominic Cal- Calvert-Lewin. In 9th, Aston Villa who have had a very good transfer window well, by the fact they lost their best player. Overall, I think they'll improve, but their European ambitions have crumbled now that they have lost Grealish. The strike force of ba- Bailey, Watkins and Buendia is going to be extremely fun to watch, and I think they'll be one of the most exciting teams to see in the Premier League. Eighth, I think Tottenham are going to have a pretty steady transitional season. Prior to the signing of Christian Romero, the potential sign of Kane would have really derailed their European ambitions, but I think Romero has one of the best defenders in Serie A last season. And because Nuno plays a similar but more conservative style as Atlanta, he'll really shine for them this season, especially compared to the lower caliber of defenders that are at Spurs. Son will be their best player by far. In a very impressive campaign again, West Ham under Moyes might get 7th ahead of Tottenham. Moyes has shown before that he's very good at maintaining league position de- despite European commitments. If they get Lingard back or even Tammy Abraham, they'll have a pretty good attack with Bowen having another good season and Declan Rice getting his first taste of European football. In a surprising sixth, I think Arsenal are going to be back in Europe. Maybe under Arteta or maybe not. But I think as a team, the lack of fixture condition of Europe along with the fact that Spurs are in transition will help Arsenal return to the Europa League ahead of West Ham. Ben White, while I doubt he'll be worth 50 million, will definitely improve Arsenal's incre- incredibly error-prone defence. If they get Odegaard, that along with Emil Smith-Rowe's new contract makes for a pretty solid attack. And they have been pretty good since around the halfway of last season and that could carry over into this season. Into fifth, it's Leicester for a third year in a row, which is both impressive and not impressive, because while they are punching up up their weight, both times they've been to the top four until like the fi- last five games. This time I feel like they'll, they won't be fighting as closely for the Champions League spots, not by fault of their own, more the fact that every other team has improved significantly since last season. Now, for the top four that realistically could end up in any order and it wouldn't surprise me. Every team has improved in the transfer market. Liverpool actually have centre-backs now. City have broken a transfer record and someone they don't even really need. United bought Sancho and Varane. And Chelsea have apparently just bought Lukaku to solve the striker issue. So unless one of them has an injury crisis or all their silings flop, those four are nailed on to be back in the Champions League. In fourth, I'm going to have to go with Liverpool. Van Dijk's been injured almost a year, and players rarely get back to their best immediately after those kind of injuries. As well as that last season, Jota and Salah were their only attackers who didn't have a poor run of form, and they haven't replaced Vinaldo. I think they'll end up focusing on the Champions League more if they aren't in a title race around halfway the season, so I'm going to go slightly disappointing fourth for Jürgen Klopp's Reds. In third place, I think it'll be United, if Chelsea do sign Lukaku. They have addressed the two biggest holes in their squad, but the lack of a proper defensive midfielder might come to the forefront because of it. I think they'll have more clean sheets and probably go far in all competitions, but I don't think a title race is on the cards, unless they buy someone like Ruben Neves at the end of the transfer window. I'd say the expectations for the Red Devils should be around 80 to 85 points and with luck even a trophy. In second place, in what I think is going to be a very interesting, albeit slightly dystopian title race between the two richest teams in England, I think Chelsea will come close, but not close enough to the trophy. The Champions League holders have shown how defensively solid they are under Thomas Tuchel, and with the Blues allegedly having agreed a deal for Inter Milan superstar goal machine, Romelu Lukaku for around 110 to 120 million pounds, and breaking the Premier League transfer record set by Zach Grealish last week, 
I still don't think Chelsea are good enough at breaking down tough lower blocks to be able to batter lower half teams in the same manner that City do and have done for the last few years. And my title winners are, unsurprisingly, Manchester City. Pep Guardiola's side have shown that they are more than adequate at employing a system that doesn't require a striker. The signing of Jack Grealish, albeit not the best signing they could have made, will definitely add a kind of X factor to Man City's attack. His dribbling and chance creation is up there with the best and he'll certainly be a very good addition to a side already glittering in quality. If they do sign Kane, it'll be a completely built squad and other than maybe PSG, no other club will have a more be- overall better squad. During Guardiola's time in England, the only manager to really go toe-to-toe with him in a title race as at his best has been Jurgen Klopp. But even in the season Liverpool won the league, it was indirectly down to City's lack of good depth at centre-back. They've addressed that by since spending more than 100 million on two centre-backs. One of them from a relegated Bournemouth who doesn't even make the team. Thomas Tuchel will need luck and an insanely good Romelu Lukaku's goal-scoring season to be able to topple this Man City team over 38 games. Anyway, that's going to be it from me guys. Let me know what videos you want to see on this channel. Make sure to like, subscribe and comment down below. Peace.